Are you ready? You know, that's the one thing that comedy has uh, allowed me to do. It's I formed some fantastic friendships with people that I never really would have even uh, got to know. Uh, and also we're able to send a message. If there's anything serious to come out of these comedy shows, is that with all the negative press that the Middle East gets, we want to show people that, look, come on, at the end of the day, we are real people who enjoy humor. You, you're sitting here at the moment, all nationalities, huh, enjoying the common language of humor and comedy. Is that right? And you're enjoying yourself? Cool. You know, we're not fighting, we're enjoying, you know, so the, so the message really is, whether you're white, black, brown, pink, or purple, you can enjoy comedy. <laughs> Actually, if you're purple, you might want to pop into Samso and get to get a, get a bit of a check out. <laughs> but um, other than that, it's, it's all good. Um, I'm going to actually introduce the, the next act on stage now. Uh, he is, again, a favorite uh, of the crowd here. He was at my last show and he made a big hit. I got some fantastic feedback about this guy from the last show. Um, he's performed uh, in Saudi Arabia, obviously. He's performed in Bahrain, in, uh, in his native Lebanon. So now it's a clue to who he is. Uh, he's also performed all over Europe, which is a great feat from someone from this region. And I'm sure he'll, he'll go much, much further afield. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, what I consider to be one of the most polished performers in this region, please welcome onto stage Mr. Rami Salame. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Those of you who clapped. The others, you still have time to redeem yourself. Not now. <laughs> You'll have 10 minutes to do it. <laughs> so it's good to be back to Chabad after a, a year and a half. It's, it's really great here. My friends took me to the mall so I could eat at Popeyes because uh, we don't have Popeyes in Jeddah. But I was very surprised there was not a single item on the Popeyes menu that had spinach in it. I just want to let you know if Popeye finds out, he's going to kick some ass. You like that one? <laughs> you watch cartoons? They don't. <laughs> We're at the same brain level. Um, okay, I thought I'd start by telling you a small confession. Um, I got into uh, uh, comedy against my will. I, I never wanted to be a comedian. I, I wanted to be a magician. Yes way. <laughs> I wanted to be a magician because magicians are cool. They get, you know, like, they're mysterious. But uh, I was never good with my hands in public. Um, so I gave up on that dream, but uh, unfortunately my parents are still upset at me because uh, at the age of 12 I was experimenting, I, I sort of sawed my sister in half. I don't know why they're upset, she's perfectly normal, she's 28 years old, she's living and working in Bahrain and Abu Dhabi, she's perfectly normal. She even got married last year. She got married to a real magician. And that shocked me. You know, I thought you were afraid of magicians since the accident. And she said, I don't know. He, he just made me feel whole again. <laughs> now, to take this seriously, this is my life. Um, if any of the ladies are thinking of getting married, you should marry a magician. Because the wedding was awesome. I mean, it was a magic show. There was a chair, and then the magician came up, and he did a trick. He's like... And then the bride appeared in the chair and everybody started clapping. I'm like, hey, hey, hold on a minute there, Copperfield. Nice move, but that woman is not my sister. He's like, calm down, everybody. I try again. I try again. I never said he was a good magician. After they got married, the magic started to fade from the relationship. And she calls me up. She says, and my sister says, um, this guy's pissing me off. He, th he thinks everything's a show. Listen to him. He's like... Watch as I put the laundry into the washing machine. True story. Watch as I cut the sandwich in half. I know some of you are thinking my sister's husband sounds like Antonio Banderas. But actually, 
He sounds like the Count from Sesame Street. Four magic tricks. Ah, 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 ah. I got my fan section right there. Thank you, guys. Sleepy people. So, um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about how my sister invited me to her wedding because I'm still upset. Um, she sent me a Facebook invitation. She did. And uh, at first I was very upset. I mean, you know, uh, it's the 21st century. Yes, technology and everything, but whatever happened to our traditions, you know? Why not? Why didn't you send me an SMS? <laughs> Hi, my wedding's on Wednesday. Wanna come? Lol. <laughs> okay. Uh, then I realized this is the 21st century. I don't want to. I don't want to sound old and you know. So so I wanted to show I'm not upset. So I, I clicked maybe attending. <laughs> That's the Facebook version of Inshallah. So. I mean, So I clicked maybe attending, and then I figured the perfect wedding gift for her, wedding invitation on Facebook, you got a cow on Farmville. <laughs> We're friends now again. I, I, uh, she added me, I followed her. And, uh, but we, 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 we worked out our differences. And, but you know, when, the more I think about it, I'm, I, I actually think it's a good idea that she sent the Facebook invitation because if they had to go and give out you know, cards to everybody, it would have taken forever. Her husband's a show off. He'll go to a house, he's like, hello, we are here to invite you to our wedding. Pick a card, any card, don't show me. Show them. You pick the wedding invitation of spades. Oh man. So, um, my sister calls me, um, my sister calls me, well, she doesn't call me, but anyway. I've been living in Jeddah for uh, four years now, which is great, but in four years, I'm going to tell you, I have not been able to figure out the traffic system. Because uh, one minute, there is so much traffic, the next minute, there's no traffic, and there's a car going right and left between all the cars, and, and he has a baby on board sign, and I follow that guy, you know, how could you do this to your baby? but it's the baby that's driving. <laughs> so, let's look at the logic here, Saudi Arabia. Babies are allowed to drive, but women cannot. <laughs> I don't know. Now, ladies, before you get really excited, we need to establish some rules. Before you get the car keys, we just need to know. You cannot drive the same way you walk inside the mall. Because we see how you walk. You walk in groups of four and you spread out. You don't look right, you don't look left. We can't go through you, we can't go around you. And if we honk at you, security kicks us out. We can't have this on the street. Now, um, life in Saudi is really great for me. I really enjoy it here, but there's one day every year that, that scares me. It's home decoration day. I wake up in the morning, it's a normal day, I get dressed, I wanna go to work, I open the door, and on my doormat is the Ikea catalog. This means I have to go to Ikea with my wife. And, I, and I'm not gonna lie, I hate Ikea. I hate it, I hate it as much as the women like it, as much as my wife likes, likes it, I mean, I hate it. I hate Ikea because it's a trap. You walk in there, no windows, no doors. You have to buy your way out. You know, I stop a guy, excuse me, how do I get out? Yes, you take this, you pay there, you go. And, and Ikea, I mean, Ikea is the only place, I think, in the kingdom uh, that, that actually discriminates against men. Because the minute I walk in there, they totally ignore me. They, they talk to my wife. There are posters on the wall, they're like, Hadi masahatuki. I'm like, hello, Hadha Anna. I pay the rent. There's a fly. I took a shower. For this reason. So, um, Ikea, Ikea, the reason they talk to women is because they're, they're sneaky. They understand the psychology of women because women will buy anything if you can convince them that it's practical. So you walk in there and Ikea talks to you. They're like, look at this sofa, it's so practical. You just bend it like this, fold this like this, fold this over here, bend this over here, 
and it becomes a bed. <laughs> Practical, you know, in 20 minutes. And then they talk to you about reducing clutter around the house and making space for your family. You know, with these shelves, you can make space for your children. With this side table, you can make space for your husband. And then, and then now you have all this space. You walk, and then there's a sign. Hi, you have space in your living room. How about buying the giant bookcase? <laughs> it's a trap. And, and, and Ikea, I mean, I mean, who are you kidding? I walk in there, they got posters on the wall. Swedish lake, Swedish mountain, Swedish... Swedish cabin, I mean, I mean, Sweden this, Sweden that. I'm in your showroom, I open the closet, there's a Thob and Abaya in the closet. <laughs> Who are you kidding? I mean, is this the room for the Bertha student and her husband? Uh, I, I, I wanted to go to Sweden, it's, it was my dream to go to Sweden, but now I'm afraid to go there because I, I think some tour guide will come up to me, ignore me, and talk to my wife. He'll be like, hello, welcome to Sweden, yeah? Sweden is practical. You can fold it like this, bend it like this, put this over here, put this under there. And Sweden be also becomes Denmark. Which makes some space for souvenirs. <sighs> Ikea has, has no, like, no respect for men. I mean, if you had any respect for me, you should do like a special lane for men. Because sometimes men, we, we go to Ikea alone and we want one or two things and, and we don't want to go through the dishes and the Tupperwares and the shower curtains. We just give me one straight line from the door to the shawarma stand, you know? <laughs> this is why I'm at IKEA. I want your two real shawarmas, yeah. I, I want to buy two shawarmas, which I can fold like this and bend like this and put something there, fold this like this. And, and the two shawarmas become one falafel sandwich, which is practical. It makes space in my stomach for dessert, you know, later on. I don't want to sound, I don't want to complain, but, uh, no, no, I'm not complaining. This is just fun <laughs> and laughter. Um, I don't hate all shopping. I just hate going to Ikea, but I, I love shopping because when I go shopping, I can observe women at the malls. I, I do it scientifically, no intentions, because I'm married and because uh, I love my wife and because her elbow fits in my rib cage every time. <laughs> so I, I just, you know, observe, take notes. And, and... I noticed this trend with women happening. It's the women are carrying bigger and bigger bags. <laughs> Giant bags. I mean, maybe it's cool, maybe it's stylish, but I, I need you women to understand something. It's, it's making me very insecure. <laughs> Every morning when my wife wants to go to work, I see her carry that giant bag. I can't help but ask her. I'm like, baby, are you coming back home? <laughs> can, can I look in your bag? Is that a shirt? Give me your passport. <laughs> And women in Saudi Arabia, really, they are so stylish, they're so elegant. Please give a hand to yourselves. You guys are, are great, great. I love, I love how they dress. I, yeah, yeah, you're great, you're great. Okay. She's greater than you all, because she kept on clapping. She's clapping and looking at him, so she's not clapping for me, she's clapping for him. What did you say? Oh, you were showing him how to clap. Okay, great, sorry, I didn't understand. Um, I love, I love how the women, they do their makeup, uh, and, you know, the, the, the whole head wrap. It's, it's really, really nice. But there's always one woman at the mall that's got it all wrong. You know, she doesn't know what she's doing. You know the one I'm talking about with the orange blush on her forehead? <laughs> the giant green eyeliner. The pink lipstick. Her mouth doesn't close because of the gum. <laughs> and that woman confuses me. I'm like, hey, lady, uh, which character are you? Your cape says Batman, your face says the Joker. Are you the good guy or the bad guy? Are you even from Gotham City? In, uh, in part of uh, in, in keeping ahead of technology and improving myself, I, I, I am embracing the technology. I recently switched from PC to Mac. Thank you, thank you. But again, let's agree on something. Some people, they like Mac because it's cool, because it has the apple on the back, because when I buy it, I buy the Gucci glasses. Yeah. Yeah, some people are really fanatic. They want to buy everything from Apple so they can show it off, you know? My iPod, iPad, I paid, I paid, I paid a lot for that one. <laughs> show offs. Not me. I mean, I moved to Mac because I got tired of the way PC talks to you. PC is so dramatic. PC is like, oh shit, 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 shit. <laughs> This program's performed an illegal operation and will be shut down. Shit. Now, calm down, drama queen. 
it's so dramatic. I, I mean, I like the way Mac talks to me because Mac is cool, Mac is mellow, Mac is probably high. <laughs> Mac talks to you like this. Mac is like, dude. I don't know what happened, man. The program just quit unexpectedly. I was getting something from the fridge. You're out of chips, man. You're lucky it's dark and no one knows who's, who's the smoker in here. <laughs> so, um, part of the reason I, I, I switched to Mac is because PC also, sometimes it reminds me of my mother. I'll be working on PC in the middle of the afternoon. I'm minding my own business. And this message pops up in the corner. Hey, you got some unused icons on your desktop. Come here, let's clean them up. I'm like, don't touch anything. This is my desktop, mom. Leave me alone. Uh, thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Good night. Mr. Rami Salami, keep it going for him. Thank you. Well done. Come and join me. Come and join me. Wow, Rami, nice set, nice set. How was the audience for you today? Let's talk about them. They hated me. You hated them? They hated me. No way. There's only one guy, he said no, but it's because he's surrounded <laughs> by people. Surrounded by girls. I, I loved your Ikea stuff. I really, I enjoy that because I'm, I'm a great fan of Ikea. I collect a lot of comedy material when I go there, seriously. Um, the, one, the one thing when you see the names of the furniture, they put the designer's name in front of the actual furniture and you have to remind yourself it's not an adjective. So when you see crap coffee table, <laughs> you have to keep saying that it's spelled K-R-A-P-P, -P, you, know, you know, or, or bent lampshade. You know? uh, so you've got to keep reminding yourself. But sure. you, you, and you come across some um, lost people, you think. I came across a Saudi guy the other day. Yeah, he, please tell my family I'm okay. <laughs> I've been trying to get out for three days. <laughs> I'm following these damn arrows and they keep coming back here. <laughs> but it's all good stuff. When's the last time you went into Ikea then? Uh, I was uh, trapped in Ikea in, uh, <laughs> for three months in 2009. Really? Yeah, that's when I lost my hair. I was just about to ask. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you can buy it now. Really? Yeah, they're selling it, my hair. You can fold it like this, bend it like that, put it like that. <laughs> Is that designed by crap too? <laughs> crap hair. Really <laughs> crap, crap hair. hair. Yeah, that's why I got rid of it. <laughs> Yeah. Nice one. Well, may Allah give you lots of hair uh, where it belongs. Thank you. And, uh, <laughs> and All the other places are taken care of exactly. by, <laughs> by genetics. Let's not go down that route. <laughs> yeah. It's a wonderful having you in the Eastern uh, Province. And I please. just have one last thing to go say. For, please, uh, please. Guys, if, you, if you're at work or you're at school and, you, and you're getting bored and you want some laughter, please follow me on Twitter. I'll make sure that you laugh. <laughs> Rami Salemi, my name is on your ticket. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank Rami Salemi. Thank, Thank you so thank much. You.